Hey, what's up, guys? Keith Underwood here, creator, writer, and producer of Kalifi and the Timeless Centuries. And we got a very special guest today, my boy that you will know from Tyler Perry's If Loving You Is Wrong and Acrimony, Mr. Jay Hunter. What's up, Jay? What's happening, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Man. I still got to get used to this uh, Zoom thing, man. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if I can change my shirt. You know what I'm nah, saying? No, man, you good. Maybe I should put some pants on. I don't know. <laughs> now, see, now you're going to have the ladies telling you to stand up. So, <laughs> But I think, I think you're good, man. I think you're good. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks good. How you been, man? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Good. How's all of this uh, new world working out for you? Oh, we all can see this new world, man. We're trying to... I think we all trying to navigate through this thing together, man, trying to figure it out. But, oh, you know, yeah, most definitely. What, what's the worst part about it for you? I don't know, man. I'm, it just really depends. I mean, to be honest, it's just that, you know, the industry got shut down. It was almost right. like 20 right off. Um, masks, I'm easy. Like, I don't, I don't trip about the masks. I mean, until it's like 118 million degrees in the valley, then I wish I didn't oh. have it. Yeah, and, and, and smoke. Don't forget the smoke right now. Oh yeah, that's 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 really. I mean, the mass actually is helping now because of the because uh, of the smoke. That's right, absolutely. The social distancing thing, you know. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how you navigating that, Jay? How you navigating the social I distancing? Woman. I saw this woman in the, uh, in Ralph's the other day, man. Oh man, she was so pretty, but I don't know for sure, for sure, because she had a mask on. Right. But that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to try to holler at her from like six feet away. It's, it's just, you know, the intimacy is just not there, man. Right. So I smiled at her. Did you get that number, I Jay? I smiled at her either because I, you know, I had a mask. So, did you so get right. the number? But what are you talking about? Just six feet. I told you I smiled. You couldn't tell if I was. You're supposed to yell at her, Jay. You're supposed to yell at her. Hey, man. That's <laughs> the thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess now whistling. Kind of works now, I can, I can, and, and you know, you, you might you might get a case you might get a case for whistling. <laughs> yeah. That's what but, I'm saying. I didn't know what to do, man. So I right. just kind of like I smiled, which you probably never knew that I smiled because in my mask, and I just I just just walked away like a punk, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's all good, man. You know, it's it's like it's funny because the first thing I thought about is that social distancing it brings a whole new meaning to the term holla. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So now, like, so now, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to do. Right. People have to break out the soup cans and the string. You know, <laughs> you, 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 we little lads won't know anything about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need to just carry that with me, man. That's actually a pick of line. I wonder what happens if I, if I use that one. <laughs> so, D Jay, tell me an interesting story about you growing up. Man, listen, you know, interesting stories, man, are normally the ones that are like, when you get older, they, they see they're interesting, but at the time, they're like super frightening. So you like block them out of your mind. Right. That's, that's kind of how I feel. But, uh, you know, I could tell you this to, to stick to like acting, man. You know, when I was six years old, it was my first time I got on uh, in front of everybody to like perform. And, uh, man, I was only six, but man, I was so nervous, you know what I mean? Like I was working on memorizing this whole thing and I used to get hundreds on all my tests, but when it came down to memorizing and, re and just regurgitating in front of people, it was just like a whole new thing. Right. And I remember halfway through, I like totally messed up and I started walking off the uh, stage because I didn't know what else to do. And uh, something came in my mind right away, like, yo, you got to play it off. They don't know what the lines are. And I was right. like, Oh, meanwhile so then I like did something I did like a spin and then I something came to my head to remember what else I had to say and I just started you know saying doing the rest of my monologue and uh I totally played it off I was only six years old but after I got off stage I was so nervous I swear to god that affected me for like the next eight years <laughs> <laughs> so I was in high school man you know all the way to eighth grade I couldn't even go and get my eighth grade diploma because I was so afraid of that same stage of when I was like in kindergarten wow and you're like, yeah, and I forgot mine's halfway through the whole monologue. Dude, what um what um what project was that? What was the uh name of the uh the event? Man, it was like 
kindergarten class. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I don't even remember what my lines were then. I don't remember what my character was. All I remember, it's almost like I'm eavesdropping on myself. I just could picture myself, I used to have this curly fro. Right. I remember being so nervous and I just, and the lights were on me and I could kind of see people in the, in, you know, in the audience. And I remember that whole time I was talking, 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 and I forgot my lines. And I just started leaving. I didn't know what else to do. So I'm like, oh, I guess I guess I got to walk off now because I don't know what else to say. Right. And half, like I said, I, it kind of dawned on me like, no, they don't know. They don't know. Play it off. That's all I really remember, man. Yeah. That's, that's a good story, man. Eight yeah. years, though. Eight years, you said? Eight years after that? Well, yeah. So I was in kindergarten. So I was so, that's the same stuff. So from now that, that, I went to 71, Buffalo, New York. Right. Uh, so it's from kindergarten to eighth grade and literally that same stage i was frightened of from kindergarten from that day until eighth grade when i walked to get my like eighth grade diploma it was like that stage gave me flashbacks of when i was in kindergarten like oh my god like and my heart started like boom 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 like i just remember <laughs> that, <laughs> that stage in that same moment when i was six years old man right so, dude, what um, what other activities were um, do you feel that you were involved with during that time period that kind of contributed to your overall development as a man? Oh, that time period. You talking about when I was in kindergarten, eighth grade? No, 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 man. Just growing up. Um, I mean, I I just think you know you go through things little at a time, and they're all learning experiences. You know what I mean? Uh, unfortunately, I feel like you learn the most through your mistakes. Uh, mm. You know, whether you do something your parents don't tell you that you shouldn't do and you try to do it anyway. And, you, and then when you get into big trouble, you're like, oh, my God, I, sh I shouldn't have did this, but it's too late. Right. Uh, just growing up where I grew up, man, you know, it's always, I mean, you, you learn how to use wisdom real quick, man, because there's a certain neighborhood you don't go and you do go. Right. And, where, are you, where are you from, Jay? I want you to let everybody know where you're from. I'm from uh, Buffalo, New York. I grew up on the east side of Buffalo. Um, I don't want to give the exact dates. But, you know, <laughs> some time ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Go ahead. Finish your story. Yeah, you know, it's just little things. Like, I, I think little at a time, you, um, you go through things and you just kind of, you learn. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to maneuver what life is going to throw you. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to maneuver uh, more and more every day. And uh, I think the biggest difference is um, really being focused on really what you want and being mm. determined. And no matter what, even when you make a mistake, you know, whether it be high school, you know what I'm saying, getting on the wrong bus to, you know, go see the girl that I was liked in high school, but she lived in a neighborhood that, you know what I'm saying, didn't get along with mine and taking a risk and regretting it. Um, wow. Or like, you know, or something like, uh, I need to study to make sure I get a hundred because I want to go to college because I want to, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I love sports and I wanted to make sure that I can continue to play. You know what I mean? The determination and the focus, I think over time you start to learn like, okay, I messed up, but that's not the end of all. I'm going to fight through this. I'm going to get back on track and I'm going to, you know, follow my dream and what I really want to do. Right. So you played football, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about, you know, um, how you got involved with football and, and what it meant to your growing up? Well, I can't remember exactly. I, I remember watching my dad, you know, when I was real young, he'd watch football on Sundays, man. And, and I'd watch too, you know, and, and I thought it was so cool. Like they had helmets and they had colors on the helmet and you know what I mean? It just, it was aggressive. And I was just like, I, I was just that kind of kid, right? So I always wanted to play. And I think, uh, like, I begged my parents for, like, years. I want to play, I want to play. And, you know, something would always come up, whether we couldn't, like, afford the equipment or, like, you know, something. Um, but finally, when I was 11 years old, I got my own paper route. And I just saved up, like, all my little $18 a week or whatever I was making or a month. I think it was, like, it was, like, something crazy low. And, by the way, people would never pay me the bill. I'd be delivering their papers all day, every, every day for the week. And wow. then when I tried to collect, it was, like, $2.85 back then. And they, they wouldn't pay me. So right. then I'd be getting in trouble by my district manager because he would think that I was spending the money on, like, at the corner store. And I was like, no, they're not giving me the money. But, anyway, I digress. I'd saved up just enough to buy my football equipment. And I was able to, finally, my parents let me play, man. And that's all she wrote, man. That's all she wrote. But 
a funny story is apparently my grandfather, who, by the way, is a former athlete, he played in the United Negro League. Okay, um, I didn't know in, that, man. Yeah, in Birmingham, actually. Okay. He was born in like 1901 or 1903, something like that. And um, he would always tell my dad, he was like, your son's going to be a football player, your son's going to be a football player. And he used to say Franco, he used to call me Franco Harris. Like that was the time frame when I was born and you Franco Harris was the guy. Right. And uh, I think mainly he was mixed and he had that curly hair that I had. So I found out later, you know, my parents tell me, they're like, yeah, your granddad, he used to, he knew you were going to play football. Um, and uh, it was kind of a sweet irony um, uh, when I was growing up. They blowing you up, Jay, they blowing you up. <laughs> and I, I meant to turn off the volume, but I, I just got this new phone, which is the uh, Samsung 10, which is really not the new phone because it's Samsung 20. But right. I'm always late on uh, the technology, so I'm still trying to learn how to use this stupid thing, man. So I thought I'd turn off the volume. But. <laughs> it's, man, this is the world we live in. You know, it's, it's, it's live from wherever you are. <laughs> so guys if you don't see me posting in a while that's because i got this new phone i'm still trying to figure out how to use instagram on this new phone which is technically not a new phone because the new generation already came out this year right <laughs> that's all good man so tell me um how did you get into acting how did you get into acting well um other than when i was six years old and i, and I had to do that monologue on stage professionally uh, Okay, so I tried to kind of sort oh, you're talking about professionally? Yes, sir. Yeah, so professionally. So anyway, anyway long story short, I ended up playing football through determination, went to college, uh, played in, uh, in the Arena League. And I was in Canada, actually, and they had a, uh, they wanted uh, guys for this, what they told me is like a football movie, uh, it was really a TV show called Playmakers. Uh, but they wanted guys to come out. They wanted guys who could really play. And they were like, yeah, we're going to do a combine. So for me, it was just like, yeah, I'm just doing more football stuff. Right. And, um, yeah, they booked me. And how did you find out about the audition? You know, I was in, we were, I was in Canada. And uh, the football community is, is relatively smaller there. Like, they're big on hockey. So right. if you can play, uh, they know who you are. And I guess mm -hmm. they, they're just trying to get the best – football athletes that were in the city at the time and I was there and um, I got a phone call. I literally got a phone call from somebody who I didn't know who got my number from somebody that knew I played football and they found my number. And they said, hey, yeah, um, yeah, you have to go and do this uh, audition uh, way across town. I was living in Toronto at the time and it was like in an hour or something like that. It was like the same day. It was like right away. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's, you know, so I'm like trying to get briefed on like auditioning. And then to come to find out it wasn't a regular audition, it was really about football. So I was like, okay, that's even easier. I just gotta do, you know, I just gotta do a combine basically. Right. And yeah, I remember I was wearing these like, I mean, it wasn't the typical gear that you wanna wear for a combine, but I had what I had and I just went. And right. uh, so, you know, I got a phone call. I was like, yeah, we'd love to, uh, sign you up and i was like okay <laughs> when, right. when are you gonna be there you know what i mean but the interesting thing was you know although i got there originally to do like basically football stunts and stuff like that um i I'm, I'm always intrigued about my surroundings and, and i watch mm. how sets operate i mean logistically it's amazing it's kind of like the military like you know oh my goodness like everyone has their own job and they're moving around and you got 60 people on the same page, like just moving so, so smoothly and so on point. And um, I would just watch. And uh, I, luckily I got to work with um, Omar Gooding was one of the uh, lead actors on it and uh, a couple other guys. And I start picking their brain because I was like, man, this is pretty cool. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't have to worry about uh, getting injured. Like it's, it's, it's real, but it's fake. Right, right. But it's real. Right, but and, it's real. Uh, yeah, and then next thing you know, they auditioned me uh, for an actual part, and uh, which was a crazy story in its own. And you know, long story short, they gave me the part, and I played this character named Beals, uh, okay. and uh, I had a blast. And that's all she wrote. And I was just like, man, I got to keep pursuing this because it's too fun. I did not realize how hard it was, though. Right. Um, I mean, I still would have did it, 
But uh, yeah, it would have been nice if somebody told me like, be, like, no, this industry is ridiculously hard. Oh yeah. Uh, and I blindly went into it and I just was, I just loved it. And I loved everything that I was learning. And I just, I just dived in. Started taking a bunch of acting classes, started going to auditions, failing miserably. Right. And, and not realizing that I was gonna fail many, 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 many more auditions before I booked one. Otherwise, right. maybe, maybe I'd have had second thoughts. Right. Um, but they, they, life never gives you the, uh, the blueprint to the end. It only gives you up to what you know, right? So that's right. You know, it's funny. I um, interviewed Russell Simmons years ago, and one of the questions I asked him was, "What's the secret to success?" And he said, "Failure." Because yeah. hopefully you learn from your mistakes, you grow, and that leads you to success. So, yeah, man. Um, curious, though. So, um, did you play, did your character play the same position as you did when you were playing professionally? You know, that's a good question, actually. So, originally, it did not. Uh, I played defensive back, um, and the character was a linebacker. So I'm around everybody on that show are like real dudes. We all came from like real football stuff. So right. I'm too small to be a linebacker. And I try to tell them that, um, again, me being naive, not realizing that, you know what I'm saying? You don't tell the writers and directors <laughs> what you want to do. Like they tell you, but I didn't know any better. And I just told them like, look, I can't be a linebacker. Like it doesn't work. And Somebody came up to me and was like, no, 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 don't worry about that, man. It's, this is film. Like, you don't tell them what to do. You just, you know what I'm saying? They gave you lines, just, just act. Right. Um, the day that we were shooting, they changed it. And they were like, yeah, so we're going to make you a defensive back. And you know what I mean? You're going to play safety. And I was like, yes, because that's what I play. Right. And, um, it was cool, man. It was, it was really fun. So, I, you know, it worked out that day. But I, I did learn quickly not to uh, ruffle feathers when they <laughs> They give so, you a roll, you just take the roller. You either say yes or no. Like, you don't say, no, I'm going to do it differently. That doesn't, it's not the big deal. Right. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, what, what do sports and acting have in common? Oh, man, so many different things, man. Number one, focus. Number two, determination. Uh, number three, I really think uh, you hit it on the nose with, with failure because, you mm -hmm. know, in sports, you're going to fail. I mean, just as a you're playing a game, so you're not always going to win. You're going to lose. Um, you get out there and you're going to compete every single play, every single down, every single drill, and um, somebody's trying to beat you. So you're going, you're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to suffer defeat. Um, it's about what you do after. It's about going back and looking back. Okay, what can I have done differently? Um, and sometimes you can. You just got to play hard. You did everything right, and the other guy just got one up on you. You know what I mean? You just got to continue to work at it. And I think acting is is similar. Um, you're gonna go, and only one person get the part. And you go back to the drum board, like, okay, what can I what can I have done differently? Um, and then sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's just that guy just was, you know, right for the role. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, they can only pick one person. You know, and you right. have 500 people audition. And that's only that's only step one. Once you get the part, it's, you know, it's determination and focus still, you know, because now you, you know, you got to go to set for 12 hours and shoot and then be back at you leave at 11 p.m. And you got to be back there at 5 a.m. And, and, you know, so the discipline part of it and the focus and the determination, I think, goes hand in hand. And that helped me a lot. A, a lot. That's good, man. Um, which one of your characters? that you've portrayed had the most impact on you and why? You know, that's a good question, man. You know, when you dive into a role, um, it has an effect on you. Uh, it really does. Uh, and la lasting effect, you know. Um, but irony, ironically enough, I want to say I played this one character and it's different. So basically, I'll just tell you the whole story. So okay, I was, so when, uh, when like uh, violence against women, when that movement first started and uh, they did the V-Day. Yes. Uh, they started doing V-Day monologues and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I went in and auditioned for a part and, uh, you know, I got, the, I got a role. Didn't really know what I was, I just had to bring a monologue basically. And then when I got there, they were like, yeah, we're gonna give you 
our own version, like a monologue that we want you to do or whatever. And, uh, and they gave me this uh, monologue, it's called Part Owner. And basically the writer was Michael Eric Dyson. Mm. I'm a fan of his actually. And um, the reason why I think that had a, a pretty big impact uh, because it, it kind of was like one of the first times where I got to really take my acting and real life and really blend them in a blend them in a way that was kind of like current affairs. Um, it's hard to explain because, you know, everything that we do portrays real life. But mm. this one was kind of like, it was different because it was kind of like, it instilled something in me that I could bring in my real life. Right. As a, like just portraying real life. So it was almost like I took a piece of, of, of Michael Eric Dyson in a way. Um, because, you know, those are his words. And right. I remember... What you know, was it? What was it in particular that resonated with you? You know that you know impacted how the person that you were moving forward. Well, the way I decided to do this monologue was as a person, as a character, but also trans. I, throughout the monologue, I transcend to actually. It was almost like I was speaking to the audience, mm. and in a way, like literally Jay Hunter speaking to the audience. Through Michael Dyson, uh, Eric Dyson's words, and and I think the reason why that had a big impact on me because I realized even more like what the potential is as an actor. Um, it's not just the role that I'm going to show or portray in that particular moment. It's not just Beals or Ian Glenn on "If Loving You Is Wrong" or or whoever I'm playing, which they're all they're all wonderful and all portray things that happen in real life and you, and you can touch people in, in so many ways. But it was, it started to mold me and be like, who do you want to be as Jay Hunter? Mm -hmm. Like, what roles do you want to choose to, to sign up for? How do you want to speak out to the world when you are Jay Hunter? What, what are you trying to change? What are you trying to, what are you trying to be about? And I thought that was one of the turning points when it really got me to realize like, you know what, when I'm speaking to people, man, it's gotta be about change. When I'm speaking to people, it's gotta be about um, how can we become better? Um, it, it's not just who, as, who I am as an, you know, in a role. It's like, how, do I, how am I gonna live my life? When people ask uh, you, what am I, how am I responding? What, who, you know, am I gonna show what I'm passionate about? And I'm about change, I'm, I'm about the people. And I thought in that monologue, there was so much of that, that it was more than just me speaking out or, or portraying this, this role. It was Jay Hunter through my, Michael Dyson's words, but it was Jay Hunter speaking to an audience just as I would speak to them now. Mm -hmm. If I were to speak somewhere and they're like, Jay Hunter, come speak to these, you know, to a crowd of people about, you know, violence against women or anything for that matter police brutality, anything. And, and I felt that and that molded me because from then on, I approached what I do in life as well as uh, what I do as an actor uh, differently. Mm. And I really appreciate it. I had a, that, I wouldn't say, that does many more too, but that was one role that I went in and I came out of there and I felt like I was like a little bit reformed in a way. Right really appreciate that and uh i'm actually i never i've never met michael dyson yet but i hope to soon um you know he's uh he's, he's kind of like an icon me, so. that's good man we, we need those we need those what what kind of icon do you want to be man you know to be honest i i never really that's interesting because you know i, I see people uh who are about change and i want to be like they are and mm -hmm. uh but I never thought of myself as being an icon. I just, I just want to continue the legacy that means so much to me. And, um, you know, the opportunities that I have, I, the opportunities that I see my dad did not get, um, he was part of a struggle so that I could have it. And I, I just don't want to ever forget that. And I don't want myself or anybody else to take anything for granted and we, and we lose those things, you know what I mean? Because there's people that work hard for everybody else you know, and, and instead of themselves, man. And, and we need to be appreciative of that and we need to continue those movements and whatever it is, I'm not trying to 
be a political person or anything right in this moment. But right. uh, I do think things are important. And I think if we turn a blind eye, we don't pay attention to them, um, we're taken for granted and we could lose. That's right. A absolutely, man. Absolutely. So to get a, 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 little, a little lighter, um, you're no stranger to comic books and animation. Um, who is your favorite comic book character or superhero and why? Man, do I have to pick one? <laughs> well, hey, you can have a few, man, you know? I know you're sitting over there with multiple personalities and stuff. Yeah, listen, I love Spider. Okay. When I play football, they call me Spidey. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, things I would do on the field and stuff like that. And um, I actually was going to do a reenactment of on Halloween. I was going to pretend I was Spider-Man and I was going to suit up as Spider-Man. Really? Yeah, no, literally I was going to do this, uh, you know. This so, coming up Halloween. No, not this coming up Halloween. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, obviously, you know, we might not even have Halloween. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, obviously I was a little bit younger, you know, a little bit more agile, a little bit less mature. Right. But my dream. I was like, you know what? And I got a whole crew together. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna dress up as Spider-Man, but I'm gonna except for my shoes, because I needed shoes that had grip. So I was gonna wear some Nike sneakers. Right. And I was gonna get those things from uh from like Toys R Us or whatever. You know, they you could shoot them. It like shoots the like little gooey stuff, you know, the gooey web. And I was gonna have a guy please explain that. No, <laughs> no I'm I'm messing with you, man. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they have like the different ones. The one that I wanted was like this green stuff because I need people to see it, right? Right. And then, uh, and then I was gonna have somebody run it with a boom, and I was gonna have somebody would have would have you know just camcord or whatever, just like you know homemade thing. But I just thought it'd be so funny, like to run through, you know, downtown there, downtown district where all the clubs are and everyone's dressed up as Halloween, and I'm just running and cars are are like in traffic jam and I just run through everywhere jumping on cars rolling off them shooting people in the, in, the, in that are waiting in line and just I mean people be mad and think this is crazy but then when you see somebody running with a boom and right. you see somebody with a, like like it has to be like a cam like a you know what I'm saying where it's right. like this that would just it would just like perplex everybody because they wouldn't know what's going on then they would think like oh my god am I part of like a little like like short film or something right 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 like, I wanted to do that so bad, and I never got the opportunity to do it. And I started getting older, my joints hurt. I can't really do that. <laughs> well, well, you know, man, you that could have been one of your first jobs when you got to LA. You could have went over to uh, Hollywood Boulevard. You know, oh. where they have the character actors, man. Oh. <laughs> and then, and then I was thinking, I was like, man, but you know, if the if the cops catch me. You know, I don't mean any harm, man. I, you know, I can get slapped with a couple of uh, charges that I want. I didn't really do anything. I'm just trying to shoot people. You know what I'm saying? With like, you know, uh, harmless webbing, uh, green ooze webbing, and you know what I mean. I might jump on a few cars, but I had to jump. On, see, when I really look at, it, I was like, if I don't jump on a few cars, it's not going to be like the full extent of like Marvel. I can't just run shooting people. Then I'm just look like a crazy person. Right. I had to like jump on the cars and flip off, and you know what I mean? Because then you get the full experience. And I had a whole team because they just wanted to be down because they were like, yo, Jay, you go through this. You're just a crazy dude. And we just want to see it firsthand. Right. And I haven't done it and I probably won't now, but I did always want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good story, man. Okay. Now Disney is listening. Right. I play Bishop. Okay. Like, um, kind of like a dual personality of him, like, like the two, the different dimensions when he goes back in time. Right. Kind of play two versions of him. Um, I mean, I got this whole story in, the head, in my head, you know, Disney, maybe, maybe if I ever get a, a meeting with them, I could sit down and explain it to them. And right. I mean, obviously it comes out of the comics. So I'm not right. changing up, it, but it's just a version of it. And uh, right. yeah, if I ever got that, man, you know, I could, I could come in with the, with the, you know, the M, mark across my eye and a scar. Right. Well, see, now you got to explain to some folks who Bishop is, man. Okay, so Bishop basically- now I know, but you might have to- Yeah, so Bishop, Bishop is an X-Men from the future. So he's a mutant who was born in the future and he basically was born during a time where humans decided that X people with mut mutations were a threat to society. So. They had these sentinels and all these different things, and they basically imprisoned all mutants. And uh, they put a mark 
on their somewhere on their body um, of an M, the same mutant. And I just envision bishops with his like right right here, like across his eye. Right. And, um, and then he goes back, and then you know he tries to uh, like. Re redo history basically i mean in the comics it goes back and and talks to the present day x-men and right. you know the comics and different stuff like that but there's a version of him that has i really fixed that phone <laughs> a of him where he's got like these locks and right. you know dreads and, and i just thought i'd be cool to really put some dreads wait a minute you don't want to rock uh jerry curl bishop man you know with the uh, uh, bishop you, don't wanna, like, you know you yeah, don't want to rock can't do that. Because that's when they first created the character. Right. About the 21st century now. You know what I mean? So one of them's on the ball and the other one's gotta be dreads. It's gotta be dreads. Right. And uh, man, that would just be so cool, man. I man, I that role would definitely stick with me because I'd be wanting to do part one, part two. We we gotta keep going back in time to keep fixing this thing, man, like the Terminator. But right, right, right. Oh, by the way, for you guys that don't know, his mute his mutant pop uh power, he he's uh he he's a energy absorber right so of energy and he can basically take that energy and he can uh he can uh, retaliate and use it and turn it he can weaponize it basically That's um great. but he's like so you, six, you see you guys got some real comic book fans on here right yeah, now so yeah, go ahead know. but uh those are for, for those of you who don't know um he, just put it like this he's super cool he is and I'd be perfect for him because then yeah. i'd be cool too <laughs> spoken like well, I, I was gonna say a true nerd, but you're not. A yeah, nerd. Well, that's a true, <laughs> a true nerd. <laughs> you know, I, I own it. You know, I own it. So, so um, I know this, but how did you get involved with uh, Kalifi in the time of the centuries? Oh uh, well, Mr. Keith here, he was uh, kind enough to offer me as a part, and I was kind enough to accept. Okay. Uh, no, thank you so much, Keith, man. I really appreciate it. Um, it was a fun experience uh, working with everybody, man. And, and, and you got a dope idea there, man. And uh, yeah, it was definitely worth it, man. It was. I appreciate you. Good. I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. Let me tell you, Jay is my boy. So I want you guys to, I want you guys to understand that. I mean, I say a lot of people that I know are people that are friends or colleagues, but Jay is my boy. He's a good dude. So, um, why is Khalifi in the Time of the Centuries an important project? Well, I think it brings up a couple of different things that, uh, you know, how do, how do I explain? For instance, um, the main character is a woman. Uh, number, actually, number one, number two, and number three main characters are a woman. And I think this is a time right now where, again, you know, going back to one of the things that reformed me when I was, uh, you know, getting an acting and, you know, uh, doing the V-Day monologues. Um, I think women don't get enough uh, play. They don't get enough showtime, airtime. They don't get enough respect. And I think you have something that kind of gives them that opportunity in like a super cool way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and still bringing the history of some of the things like, you know, like John Henry and stuff like that. And um, and, and bringing it into this, into this project. Um, but I really think I'm always for the underdog. Mm. Yeah, I'm obviously, I, as a as a <laughs> as a superhero, I'm always gonna play the male role, and obviously, they got to keep going with those. But you know, we do need to show more uh, female leads in you know in, in superhero roles. So this, I think, you do you do accomplish that, and so I think for that and many more reasons, it's it's important. But that one for sure. Um, I, I think needs to be put to the forefront. And you got some dope, dope actors to, uh, you know, to um, do the voiceovers as well. So they need to get some recognition. That's really. right. Shout out to everybody, my people. Shout out to you. Thank you, all of you. Um, so you play Mr. Herndon, right? So yes. now I'm going to start laughing because I'm getting ready to ask you a question that's pretty obvious to me. But why don't you share with everybody else? What are some of the similarities between you and Mr. Herndon? Well, first of all, I used to be a teacher. <laughs> Mr. Herndon, basically, if you guys haven't seen, uh, I play a uh, Mr. Herndon. He's a uh, he's a high school teacher, and uh, one of his students is one of the leads in uh, in Califia. and uh, she gets 
you know, it opens on the typical thing that happens every day in school. You know, you got the, the kind of the one kid that wants to do right and you get the ones that heckle her, mm. heckle the other student and I'm trying to teach the class and you know, these, you know, just kids acting up, keep heckling and, and, and disrupting the class. I gotta kick somebody out and you know, send it to the, to the principal's office, which that's like a regular thing. So you know what I mean? When, when you asked, when, once I was reading the script, I was like, Oh, like, I remember that day. I remember that day. Oh, I, oh, I remember when I had to kick out such and such. I mean, it's just, it's just so typical of what happens in, in the classroom, man. It right. Was, well, what's was, another big similarity you have with Mr. Herndon? Say what? What's another big similarity you have with Mr. Herndon? The fact that he's bald. <laughs> well, the, the, you're both from New York. I mean, although different yeah. parts of New York, but you're both from New York. Yeah, so it, you know, it takes place with um, with our leads in present time in the city of New York, and um, Mr. Herndon, he's a high school teacher in New York City. Yeah, and it's and it's really funny, man, because you know, it didn't you didn't immediately strike me when I was writing it because my whole thing was you know with the John Henry legend, you know, it's all about trains, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make it, you know, modernize it. And the first thing that came to mind was subways. And, you know, and you, you can't do New York subways and a strong black female character and not bring it back to Harlem, you know? And so that was a lot of the motivation. But then I'm sitting there and I'm going like, okay, well, who would be good for Mr. Herndon, right? And then, bing, you know, <laughs> it went off. And I, because I wanted to keep it kind of authentic, man. And, you know, and I know you got your, you know, your New York draw going on, you know, when you want to. <laughs> and, um, and that you were a teacher, it was just like a no brainer, you know, at all. And then we even went so far as to kind of create the character to kind of look like you, you know, a little bit uh, as well. You're the, you're the only person that can say that, man. He was a little bit leaner and, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, and, he, and he wears glasses all the time. And, he yeah, but he looks like he could be your nerdy brother. I'm still waiting for him to bust out, you know what I'm saying? When, he gonna, when is he going to display his <laughs> superhero power? You know what I mean? That's what I'm waiting for. You know yeah. what? That's a... I'm going to sit back here. I'm just going <laughs> to wait. Three, four, maybe... It, you never know. Maybe, you know... Right? <laughs> well, 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 you know, it's funny that you say that because one of the things I was going to ask you that, you know, he never... Mr. Herndon... He never sees any action. But what makes Mr. Herndon a hero, though, man? Oh, man, he's the, he guides our lead. Um, at the end of the day, just with, you know, teachers in real life, I mean, they are heroes, man. They're the ones that our kids learn from. Um, you know, they take their, their mannerisms. Uh, I've had teachers that I've really enjoyed, and I've walked away. I still remember to this day some of their mannerisms, but they... You know, and when you remember their mannerisms, remember the things that they said after those mannerisms. Mm. You know what I mean, so if they're positive, influential things, um, you you run with them, and I think that's really where the heroism comes out of that character. Um, for now, until he, you know, <laughs> until he grow, until he grows out some dreads. <laughs> <and you know. laughs> that's what you mean. I, I know, man. I know. Because I know, I, I just, I, I know, because we know each other, I know how proud you are of your time as a, as a teacher and the impact. Uh-huh, and exhausted I, I am. <laughs> and the impact that you made a lot on of your students' lives. I mean, for you guys that don't know, Jay and I met, um, I used to be his publicist. And um, I, we would run into some of his old students and man, and they would just talk about the impact that he made on their lives. And, you know, those are the real life heroes, especially during times like this. But, you know, I, I, I understand, man, you want to get your action on always. But, but man, I want to let you know that you're a real hero because of the impact that you had on those kids' lives also. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Kid. You're welcome. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. So, um, so Mr. Herndon. He has a New York accent, and, I, and I'm speaking, you know, statewide. Of course, there are different dialects. But, um, you know, what other 
accents are you good at imitating outside of New York City, Mr. Hunter? Man, you know, as an actor, we, we, we work on, you know, accents and dialects and stuff like that. It's funny because my mind can get into something. And then once I get into it, I get into it. And then like two weeks later, forget about it. I'll forget all, you know, that I even did it. Um, but just because we do practice different things. And I, I, luckily, I've, you know, I guess I've been around a lot of people from a lot of different places. Right. Uh, you know, it, you kind of pick up certain things here and there. Um, so I don't know. What do you, what do you want to hear? Uh, why, why don't you break a little Jamaican down for me, man? Yeah, see what you know. Okay. So my past life, I, you know, I was part of a Jamaican family. So yeah, from jumping down, I uh, speak a little patois, a little, little, a little patois, and uh, and ting. You know, you know what I mean. Um, and I eat some 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 sweet bread and some cocoa bread and and ting like that. And you know, and um, yum yum some yeah, yum on some food. I mean, I just I just a little thing like that. You know, it just depends on what you like for yourself. It, it just really depends. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw you in a Bob, uh, uh, a Bob Marley movie, man. You know, I'm just <laughs> going to let you. Then you get to wear your dreads again, too. You know? I <laughs> don't want no dread and thing, you know what I mean? Because uh, I like my bald head and, and my scruff. <laughs> and I keep it a little perfect, you know? Right, just, right. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> all right all right so um when you i have a good question for you when you were a teacher were you ever in a situation like where you know kids were bullying other kids and how did you handle it all right all right let me think let me think uh you know i have to pick me them they they are they are they are mush up that one you know what i'm saying wanna yeah, throw down and, and fight a thing like this, you know. And yeah, I love break them up and have them just sit down for one thing and you have to listen to the teacher them and listen to what we say and I've said it is not for 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 strife and fight amongst each other, but to really, really, really respect the elder. Um so I have a little lick, you know, this this kind of thing uh, that it happened here and there and outside and a and a youth them um, uh, run upon the grass and 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 play some like a football and 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 you know mm -hmm. wanna press up and say you know I'm the big man and thing you know and they wanna press and fight and they they watch a little too much TV and I say no man you have to sit down you have to respect mm. each other and then you go from there. You, you know what's really funny right now? Anybody that watches this at this point in our chat, they're going to say, I didn't know he was from Jamaica. So <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never knew. <laughs> from Kings, now you know. Yeah, now you know. So, um, <laughs> Is acting is acting it for you in entertainment, Jay? Or are there are, are there other aspects of entertainment that you're interested in? Um, you know, I I'm getting into producing. Um, you know, I I'm never gonna stop acting. Um, but there are stories out there that I really want to tell, and um, I if I don't produce them, I don't think they're gonna get told. So I, I you know, a lot of them. I'm big on history. Uh, when I was a teacher, I was I was I, was, I taught history. And, um, you know, I'm big on particularly African-American history. And I think there's so many stories out there, inspiring stories, and uh, I want to tell them. Man. I want somebody to tell them. Um, but so far, nobody has, so I want to be the one to do it. And, and that's not all. So, I, I mean, like right now, we're, we're working on a dramedy. I have a, uh, a dramedy TV series that we have circulating, uh, myself, uh, a couple of partners of mine as well as a uh, Christmas uh, family, uh, loosely faith-based uh, film as well. Nice. Uh, we got some things going out there, but ultimately, um, man, if I could put something out once, once a year at least uh, that has to do with history, oh uh, man, I, you know, that's where I want to be at eventually. That's good, man. So what's next for Jay Hunter, not only in career, but in life? What's next for you, man? Well, 
if you ask me this in uh, January, <laughs> year, I mean, I had a whole bunch of what's next happening. And then, you know, March came and shut a lot of that down. Right. So, I mean, obviously, I think with so many people, man, you know, we're just uh, just trying to maneuver and mm. kind of like even with our, our uh, movie, uh, the, the Christmas movie, we kind of like we we're going to shoot um, uh, coming up in, in two months. And uh, now we got to kind of like we, we held off because after, you know, everything happened, there's so many things that changed. And, uh, you know, the director, he's older. So he's just like, you know, all these different COVID rules and, you know, prices change, you know, for the budget. There's like so many different things. Um, some Insurance. Things, yeah, no, that's a big yeah, one. Yeah. I mean, insurance, you know, you can't even get insurance nowadays if you don't yeah. have somebody who's, uh, who's credible. Uh, so, like, so many things change. So, we're, we're, you know, we're still kind of, like, maneuvering through this new landscape and just seeing what's the best route to go um, so we don't get into no problem later or, or find out, you know, you still, like, obviously the budget went up, but we're still trying to maneuver through that because we're like, okay, but you know, at first glance, it went up like a maybe a lot more than what we think. Because once once some other productions get out there, and then people start getting testing the waters, you can streamline some things after people get some practice. So we're kind of like watching and seeing what other people do and, and what's working and what's not working so well. So mm. we get get our get our crew and our actors in out safely um, without um, you know running into any kind of issues, man. And then yeah, insurance yeah, we get the insurance, but you know, <laughs> right. What do you think about you know, the next side of that? Because you had a problem, you know what I mean, with COVID nineteen. Don't don't want that, <laughs> man. Since you know, since you've done a couple of Tyler Perry uh, projects, what do you think about how Tyler is uh, handling this with the studio? Oh man, Tyler, man, he, you know, it's funny because things come full circle, man. You know, who would have thought COVID would ever shut down everything? Right. But he literally had literally has everything on his. Uh, on his campus, man, on that studio. And, and even like on our show, all those, that whole neighborhood, uh, like my house and, and the other a actors on the show, man, their characters, all those houses are built to cold. Like you can flush the toilet. Like That's every, right. 100% they're real houses you can live in them. So I didn't even know, I'm like, yo, this is super cool. But why would you build like these, like real houses? Like, I mean, just cause like, you know what I mean? He right. did it. It's now good. he can it was mess genius. Up. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? His eyes are genius. It's like, yeah. you know, he's like, you know what? I can still shoot. I'm going to just put you. Matter of fact, I got houses. You know what I mean? Really nice houses, too, man. That's <laughs> right. You guys can just, you know, stay yeah. in those. Right. And, and bigger than a normal house because obviously for the lighting and everything that you got. Right, right, right. A house, is, it'll be like a 3,500 3, square foot house. It's like 45 right. feet just because you need to open space. But that helps, too. Right. Because they have to quarantine and lock off certain things and, and, and dividers and do something like that for just for extra precautions for something like COVID-19. He could easily do it. Absolutely. So I think it's genius, man. A it absolutely it's is. Because you know what? He was the first studio that was like, you know what? While you guys are trying to figure it out. I, have I got some this. Yeah. And, and it wasn't solutions that he had to like figure out the logistics. He had solutions that he was like literally this is what we have. It's up to you guys. You want to come shoot? Come on, because I got it ready already. That's right. <laughs> Shout out to TP, man. Yeah. Shout out. Tyler Perry for that, man, for sure. Yes, sir. All right, Jay. Where can everybody find you, man? At I am Jay Hunter. No, you're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Get him. You're right. I haven't been. Hey, guys, I'm sorry. I, haven't, I actually haven't been there for like a month. Um, but I'm coming back. I'm, I'm going to be posting uh, soon. And uh, you guys, you know. That's right. See. I am Jay Hunter across all platforms. Um, yeah. You can follow at Califia Comics. If you haven't seen the motion comic web series, sci-fi fantasy epic, be sure to check it out at Califia Comics on YouTube. Again, thank you, Jay, man. I appreciate you. And um so glad we had a chance to share this. This is my first time seeing you since, well, seeing you since COVID, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. So it's good. It's good to see you, man. And you 2020 know, was like a write-off of it. Like, ooh. you know, people say, man, this year was a write-off. It kind of sucks because, like, everybody else is doing stuff, and but you, because you got to write it off. Right. But, like, literally everybody had to write this whole year off. The whole planet. That's it's right. So 
it's like we all paused. Yeah, Except man. We got older, you know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> we didn't get to just freeze. Yeah, yeah. Time, like, right. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Well, Jay, I will holler at you soon. And um, again, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Man, thank you for having me, man. All right, now. All right.